if you're watching this right now and you have tinnitus, you're going to think I'm crazy, but you're probably going to be saying the same thing. I have, you know, I've fixed hundreds and hundreds of people's ears all around the world, rich, poor, black, white, you name it. And they all say the same thing. Hello and welcome. Today's episode, we get the honor of meeting Liam Boehm, who's a 29 year old who has silenced his tinnitus. He not only has silenced his own tinnitus, but he's now helping all people over the world from celebrities to people like you and I to heal their tinnitus. And so we get to hear his story, all his tips and tricks and all of the root causes and imbalances that he believes and shares so much information. So bring a pen and paper, like I always love to say, because there's a lot of juicy information in here. And at the end of this episode, you also get a chance to get $97 off his course to silence your tinnitus. Welcome to the podcast, Liam. It's such an honor to have you here and I can't wait for you to share with us all the incredible things that you're doing in the world. So let's kick it off straight away with what's led you to your purpose and what you're doing in the world. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, as you said, uh, it's great to be here and I appreciate it. And uh, I'm hoping this story can actually uh, help a lot of people because one of the main reasons that I'm doing this now is responsibility, but we'll take it back. So would you like me to basically tell my story, how everything happened, and then sort of you want me to speak about now, that sort of thing to kind of go through it? Yeah, go for it. Whatever, wherever you feel called to start, because yeah, yeah you're definitely living with an incredible purpose, but you have yeah. such an incredible story that's led there. So let's, yeah, kick it off with your story and then from well, there. we we actually... I've got a, uh, something special for you in this uh, call because you're actually going to start with something that I haven't really spoken about. I've kind of alluded to it in some of my videos, but I haven't really spoken about it that much. But mm -hmm. obviously, we're going to talk about tinnitus today, but we have to take it even further back to when I was about, I, I grew up in England, but I came over to Australia when I was eight years old. And from the age of about 10 until the age of about 18, and it's very embarrassing to say, I had a really, really severe case of, and I keep forgetting which one it was, it was ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, which for people who, uh, who are watching who might not know what that is, that's actually um, a gastrointestinal problem, it's inflammation. In my opinion, it's caused by you know poor diet, parasites, that sort of thing. But uh, basically, unfortunately for me as a young man, it caused me to basically crap my pants two times a week at high school, which didn't exactly make me the most popular person in school, I can tell you that much. Mm -hmm. So that went on for many, many years. And, uh, you know, my mother is a nurse. And so she would uh, take me to the to the doctors, you know, the specialists. She works with uh, otolaryngologists, gastroenterologists, uh, all these specialists. So she would take me to uh, a gastroenterologist who I really liked. He was actually a really nice guy. All the nurses liked him. I liked him. My mother liked him. And, you know, in the appointments, I would go in and uh, he would say, you know, how's everything going? How's the stomach and all this sort of stuff? And I, I was a very young man, so I was, I was shy, but I, I would tell him with my mother's help, especially when I was younger. But, you know, I would, my mother would say to him and I would say to him, you know, what about diet? Like, should we give him an allergy test? Should we consider doing like a, you know, there's certain, th there's certain things that a, a nutritionist or a gastroenterologist can sometimes suggest, which is like a food restriction. So, you know, this month we cut out this sort of nut or this sort of meat or this sort of fish or flour or wheat, or maybe you're, you're uh, gluten intolerant or something like that. And the doctor who was very nice, I will say, was very nice, but he would say, no, no, that's all irrelevant. And so it doesn't matter what you put into your mouth. It doesn't matter. What we need to focus on is getting you better. And the best way to do that is salifolk and so salifolk is a steroid and it's it's very it's very toxic actually in fact i won't say who but someone in my family had a very a very similar situation to mine a health situation to mine and now he's had complete uh, kidney failure he's on dialysis and he's on a waiting list to get a new kidney because he was dying from this medication and so the, the, the same doctor who prescribed me that prescribed it to my dad um oh and i know who it was but basically as time went on, you know, my, my, yeah, yeah, he's, he's fine now, but he's, he's, he's happy and healthy. So it's fine. But basically as time went on, um, you know, my father got sick and my mum sort of said, well, I, Liam's very young and my father was old. So he's going to have these problems earlier in life. It's going to impact his life. 
And so we had to think, you know, what are we going to do? Because it's either one of two choices. We thought it was either you, I go back to that life of crapping my, my pants in front of the girls that I had crushes on in high school, <laughs> or um, taking these drugs and being very, very sick and potentially being seriously, seriously ill for, you know, a good 60 years of my life. And so I went on the internet and I had a look around and I tried to figure out, you know, what, what can I do? Because I knew it must have something to do with food, right? I thought it would have to be, you know, food turns into feces. There must be something going on in the middle. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the food. Who knows? And then I stumbled across veganism. And this was, I must have been a, 18 years old. Uh, no, 17 years old, rather. 17 years old. I was in year 11 in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And uh, you know what I did? I kept, I was like, this is amazing. I didn't realize meat was so toxic. It's so bad for everybody. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this, which is the best version to do. There's fruitarian, there's just, you know, high carb, there's whatever it is. It's like, I, I just, I knew back then animal products are bad. They're the devil. They're straight from hell. It causes cancer. I was like, oh my God, this is everything I've ever needed to know. And so basically what I did was I ended up, it's so funny to say now, I ended up going raw vegan. So not just any raw vegan, but I would have, so no sugar. Well, you know, except for the sugars in plants, right? No sugar no carbohydrates, no Coca-Cola. You know how some uh, vegans will eat like, you know, um, vegan Oreos and Doritos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. For me, I just had nuts, berries, seeds, legumes. Um, uh, what else did I have? Like chia seeds, green smoothies, the whole thing. And the craziest thing was that after about eight years of having these horrible gut issues and all these problems and being highly medicated. And at one point they put me on some very serious steroids, which my parents actually thought might stunt my growth, but it didn't. I'm six foot four or who would have known? Maybe I would have been seven foot four. Who knows? I'm happy with my height. Anyway, it's, anyway. So, <laughs> so anyway, it, it went away. I, I did this raw vegan diet and I did it for, I think it, it only took, if I'm not mistaken, it only took about two weeks, two weeks of eating nothing, but like, you know, nothing cooked, just raw and it completely went away. So I kept the diet up for about, you know, two months, three months or something. And then I started to lose weight and I didn't feel very good and all that sort of stuff. Yes. And what I did was yeah. I, I brought, yeah. And then I, I brought back meat um, and I brought back like, you know, I still, I was still just a child at heart. And I, I thought, you know, everything on the internet was true and documentaries never lie and all this sort of stuff. And so I just had eggs and things like that. And so I thought, oh my God, it's veganism, but a little bit of eggs is what did it. And I thought initially that it was the, the plants that it was so healthy and plants are so good and then medicine and meat isn't real food and plants are the solution. And so I got better and I actually have stayed better and I haven't had any problems uh, ever since. So that story is important because it links forward to the age of 21. So about four years later, three years later, uh, when I got tinnitus. So. This is why we're really here today. And this is what I'm sure everybody will be interested in hearing because everybody thinks that tinnitus. So I deal with tinnitus, hyperacusis, pulsatile tinnitus, vertigo, Meniere's disease. And I also am helping a lot of people with visual snow um, and also actually quite significant hearing loss could also be reversed in a lot of cases too. So it's pretty fantastic. Mm. So all throughout this time of uh, having these gut problems and since the age of about 13, I, uh, I played the drums and I remember it very well what made me start because I was, I won't say their names, but I was sitting in an assembly, which is like, you know, all the different years meet for like the schools, uh, teachers and stuff uh, once a week. And I was sitting in there and one of my friends, my good friends was playing the drums on stage. And sitting right in front of me was actually a girl that I had a crush on. And I really liked her, but she like, you know, didn't even know I exist sort of thing. Right. And so he was on stage playing drums and doing a really, really good job. And, uh, I heard her turn to her friend and go, oh my God, he's so good at drums. He's so cute. And I <laughs> thought, well, that's it. Like that's, that's, that's what girls like. Girls like the drummers. I'm going to play drums and then I'm going to get the girl. That was my sort of logical, you know, I connected two and two together. Right. And, uh, it's kind of true to be honest, but nonetheless, so I went home that night and I told my mom, I said, mom, I want to start playing drums. And she said, yep, that's fine. And I think within three days, 
I had my very first drum lesson and I really excelled. Like I excelled, I was just, you know, some things you just have a natural talent for. And for me, when I was younger, it was swimming. I was a professional swimmer with my twin brother, Harrison. We still hold state records in Victoria and also uh, drums. And so I had my first drum lesson and uh, my teacher, I still remember his name, Mr. Ryder, he's a lovely man. And uh, he, he didn't believe that I'd never had lessons before. And I don't think he was trying to blow smoke, you know, at my ass and be like, oh my God, you're so good. I was just knocking through sheet music and sheet music until he ran out of it for that half an hour lesson. So I really do think he was being uh, honest. So anyway, I ended up loving drums and I forgot about that girl pretty quickly and just focused on the drums because I love that so much. And so that was from the age of 13. And then at the age of 21, uh, so I'd been out of school for three years. It was late, late twenties for me, sorry, late uh, in the year at the age of 20, however I'm trying to say that. And mm -hmm. 21, I had just gotten accepted into the Victorian College of Arts of the Arts. And if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's a very prestigious school in Melbourne. They do painting, they do ballet, they do music, and it's all jazz and, con and contemporary. And like, you know, it's very, very fancy and la 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 and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got accepted on the spot. It's funny, actually, just to give you an example of how much I played drums, which led to my, the demise of my ears, which are fine now, but back then they weren't. I, you're supposed to have two auditions to this school. So you, you, two auditions in one day with a three hour break in the middle, you come in first and you play with a backing track and you play your instrument and whatever. Um, and the second audition, you have to go in there and play musical theory, which is, you know, they'll play a chord and they'll say, is this a C minor, whatever it is, sing the middle note. I want you to sing this melody. And I basically sat, at, you know, I aced the first audition so well that they say, you know, we're supposed to tell you via mail, but we want you in the school. Obviously you're going to come to this school. I was like, fantastic. I come back three hours later. It is still Victorian college of the arts in, in the city and CBD. And I, it's I make a fucking disaster out of the music theory. I'm talking like I was sweating. I was like, Oh my God, I'm blowing it. I'm blowing it. And I was, because it was just, they knew they were like, obviously you just play drums and you don't do anything else, but this is not just a course for drums. This is for music theory. And they said, look, Liam, we like you so much that we're willing to make an exception. And if you can come and take an extra class in school, we will allow you to attend this school because you're, you're very good at drums. And, you know, within, I got into the school and this is all verifiable. I, I was taught by a very famous jazz drummer called Graham Morgan. And within a month of being there, I was, I'd finished, it was a three year course. I'd finished the third year curriculum in a month. And he was like, I don't know what to do with you. So everything was looking good, right? Everything was, it's looking amazing. I, I love drums. I'm going to be a drummer. I was, I was playing all day long. I was using sometimes hearing protection, sometimes not, but the mistake I made, and this is a lesson for everyone out there. I had headphones on, right? Like cans on with no hearing protection, blasting music, and then playing drums on top of that in a tiny little cube rehearsal room, which was just causing a lot of problems uh, within my ears. And people think it's a stereo cilia problem, but it's not, we'll get to that. So I wake up one morning and the year is, oh goodness me, it would be 2012, halfway through 2012 or something like that. And I, uh, I hear a ringing in my ears and I feel, you know, I've had it before and I was like, oh, either I'm just sick or I've got a cold or I'm just tired or it's just like, I get it from music sometimes. And I, I went, you know, I stayed through the whole day, which I was a little bit concerned about. I went home that night and I woke up and it was five times louder in each of the ears. I woke up the next day, it was the same. And then, you know, over the next couple of weeks, noise sensitivity started to, to kick in. And unfortunately, Bianca, that school that I loved so much that I put so much effort into that I was riding on, you know, using that for, for being successful. Um, I ended up having to quit. So it was three months in, but the pain was so bad that even like moving this mouse or like, you know, turning the shower on, I used to, what I used to have to do back then was I used to just have baths and I would go in, turn on the bath, run away and come back and then turn it off and get into the bath because I couldn't deal with the shower. So my parents water bill, I apologize about that, but it's, it is what it is. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was awful. And so then we go into the period where, you know, I would go to my, my mother was a nurse, of course. So, uh, you know, come back to the doctors, like what else are you going to do? I would have done that if it was my son back then, like, well, of course 
you go to the general practitioner, you tell them you have a ringing in your ears. They sell them. They say, I'm going to refer you to the otolaryngologist, which is an ENT. I went to the otolaryngologist. He said, oh, maybe it's a jaw thing. Maybe it's this. Um, I said, I explained to him that I was a drummer. And they tell you, they tell you quite a scary story. And I'll tell you what that is now. What they tell you is they say, Leon, look, here's how the ear works. Okay. You have um, noise, uh, noise, uh, what I'm, sound waves traveling through the air. Okay. They go outside of the uh, penna, inside the ear canal, into the tympanic membrane. They hit three little bones called the uh, malleus, incus, and stapes. They piston into something called a cochlea, which is full of endolymph perilymph. And inside of that, you have like this sort of, the best way to describe it is like uh, seaweed. So if you've ever gone, you know, into the ocean, which obviously you have, you go, being the south of Thailand, of course, right? You yes. go into the ocean, you dive under the waves, and there are these little clusters of seaweed, right? And as the tide goes in, they move. They get sucked by the, by the water coming and going, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. that's pretty similar to what's happening inside of the cochlea, which is pretty amazing when you think about like, you know, the world kind of being the same in a lot of ways. I think it's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. The only difference is when that's being moved by that piston. So you have like the, um, the cochlea here and the piston moves it. And there's like a little oval window here, which allows for the water pressure to move back and forth. And then they, they move uh, these, the, and they're called stereocilia. And basically the stereocilia, they take that, um, the movement in the water and they convert it into um, electrons, electricity. And uh, this is called the um, mechanoelectrical transduction. So mechanical to electrical takes it to the brain and you hear it makes sense. Very mm -hmm. simplified version. They told me, Liam, because of your noise trauma, because of all this loud noise and the drumming and so on and so forth, you've broken the stereocilia inside of your ears. And because there's broken stereocilia, you're missing Okay, sections of your hearing, you can no longer hear those pitches anymore. And because of that, which is funny, because I heard pretty much fine. But because of that, your brain doesn't like gaps in hearing. So it fills it in with this phantom noise, which is tinnitus. And you know, it can be like a shh, or like a rumbling or like a really loud, like it can be a whole different thing for different people. Some people have it in the right ear, only the left ear in the middle of the head. Some people say the back of their head, but it's, it's tinnitus is tinnitus, you know, they, and I had hyperacusis, which is noise sensitivity. Some people can have pulsatile tinnitus. That's a heartbeat in the ear. Uh, some people can have uh, dizziness, vertigo, Meniere's disease, and all sorts of different things, pain in the ear, all that sort of stuff. And so they said, there's nothing you can do because they don't grow back. So seeing as you've broken them, they don't grow back. And it's the lack of them that's causing the tinnitus. Therefore, Liam, it's permanent. There's nothing you can do. We can try a couple of things, but there really is nothing you can do. So that was pretty devastating. So I can remember going out into my car um, and sitting in my car in the car park for like 15 minutes and crying because, you know, two things had just happened. The first thing was it seemed like my drumming career was over. Everything that I put all the effort into was just taken away from me, just done. The second thing was I go, okay, that's awful that the drumming career is over, but I can't live like this. I cannot live with this ringing. Like if I cannot, to try and describe it to you, Bianca, I don't know if you've had it before, but I'm sure you've spoken to people who've had it and you know about it, obviously, but yeah. it's like the most high pitched, like uh, just 10 out of 10, so loud that I could barely hear people talk. And the noise sensitivity was such that, as I said, I move my mouse, I like do this with my facial hair, I put my glasses on the table like that. It's incredibly painful. So my life was, for lack of a better word, my life was fucking over. It was done. And I was very young. So we tried a couple of things. The doctors prescribed um, some medications and some steroids. And I got surgery to get my nasal passageways widened. Because if this doesn't exemplify how doctors think about symptoms instead of the root cause, they said, look, you know, you've got a lot of mucus, you're very stuffy. Let's not focus on whether you have mold in the home, which I did a very severe case we found out later. Let's not focus on diet. Let's not focus on what you're eating. Let's give you surgery and hollow out the inside of your sinuses around here. And all that, it did nothing, of course. It cost me $2,000 and I just ended up vomiting blood for three days. And so it did, it did nothing, of course. And the allergy still persisted, except that now it had a bigger runway to just like fall out of my nose. So that was pretty awful, right? So it's, it's a whole thing, isn't it? It's like, it's just the symptom and not the cause. Yes. So anyway, I eventually, you know, 
God, it was a bad period of my life. I eventually realized, you know, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to have to learn to habituate, you know, so, and that basically is what that is. The name of, you know, the description of that is in the name. You have to learn to habituate. You have to learn to live with it. You have to grow accustomed to it. I've even seen people say, well, you know, you have to make tinnitus your friend, which is pretty crazy because if, if I had someone, a friend walking around me, two of them screaming into my ear, I probably wouldn't invite those people to my birthday party. They probably no. wouldn't get an invite. Like I wouldn't want them anywhere around me, you know? I wouldn't even want to Strong talk to Strong boundaries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just, you know, I wanted to think of one of these. Anyway, so, I, but, you know, I had couldn't hold down a job. You know, this, so three and a half years went by of this. And, you know, I turned to drugs and alcohol and I was smoking weed nearly every day for years. And I was whatever I could get my hand on, like painkillers and ecstasy and things like that. It was pretty bad, actually. Hit it from my parents. I don't think they really knew, um, but I was still somewhat functioning. I, I did pull away from social life and I, you know, as I said, I couldn't hold down a job and couldn't really keep a girlfriend or anything like that because I, I just, you know, it was just, it was just a disaster losing weight because I wasn't eating and I was just obsessed with tinnitus forums. And anyone who's been on tinnitus forums will know that those places are just full of, they're full of very negative people. And we can talk about that later if you want to, but, um, I call I that, that trauma bond. It's like a trauma bond where people join these forums and they create a bondage of the same trauma oh. because they're aware of the root cause. So, yeah. Did you say tra trauma bond? Is that what you called it? Trauma bond, yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting way of, of looking at it, actually, because, yeah, they definitely do like to keep their, here's my pain card, please give me pity sort of thing. But it's interesting how, like, when you, you meet someone and you bond over some pain, it's almost as if like, you don't want that pain to go away. Would you say that's probably pretty correct? I or... think, I think there's like two lanes. It's like, we're not getting validation or understanding from the medical industry. We're not getting validation or understanding from those around us. And yeah. so someone finally hears you and sees you and that's natural innate human connection. We want to be seen and heard. Yeah. And then you're finally seen and heard. And you also don't have a root cause or anywhere to really go. So let's just like connect with each other and keep bonding the same pain. And then it's that habitual mm -hmm. cycle of just having that friendship. And like, that's the only thing you can rely on to be seen and heard. And so people do get stuck, even myself mm -hmm. in that cycle for years until we like realize, okay, actually, you know, and I'll let you keep going yeah, with your story where that flipped for you. I, I definitely would I would agree with that because I see we'll, 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 I'll talk about that in a, in a, like ten minutes as well when I get on the story because I agree with a hundred percent with what you just said a hundred percent. Okay, so yeah, so I was visiting forums um, and you know I was always like, when's the next tinnitus pill coming? Is there some sort of research? What about how am I? I still I was still in the paradigm of broken stereo cilia, which is the hair cells I told you about before inside yes. of the cochlea, and I was like there must be a Ted talk. There must be a clinic in Sweden. Then what do the rich people do? And then I started seeing, you know, all these famous and powerful celebrities being like, yeah, I have tinnitus and I can't fix it either. Excuse me. And that was just like heartbreaking. Like I, I, I'm not, you know, too ashamed to admit that I cried probably like once every three days, just because it's just awful. Like, and I'll, I'll, I'll put something to you and we can, maybe we can have a discussion or I don't know how you feel about this, but when, you know, when I try to describe tinnitus to people, and let me know how you think about this, but I try to describe tinnitus to people, and I really do say, and it's not, this isn't a competition, this isn't anything like that, but I tell people, it's probably the worst thing that could happen to you. And, I, and hear me out here, it's not a competition again, because I say to people, okay, let's say, for example, in, in Melbourne, Australia, maybe you even heard about it, there was this kid who jumped off a pier in my local neighborhood and snapped his neck and became quadriplegic immediately. And he was like 15 years old. It's awful, like awful. But I get to thinking like, you know, that's so bad, that's awful. But when you're laying in bed at night or you're sitting down with your family watching a movie and you're all sitting or you're sitting in the park, you would eventually forget about it if even for a couple of minutes, like, you know, you would go off your mind and then eventually you go, okay, well, I can't stand up. So, and it was, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying you could forget about it. Yeah. Stage four cancer, you get diagnosed with stage four, stage three cancer, sorry, you know, pancreatic cancer, whatever it is, wherever it is, if you're going to go through chemo, you're going to feel awful, you're going to get a break, 
you're going to get respite along the way. And you can say this of like, you know, amputations and things like that. When it comes to tinnitus, it never, ever stops. Mm. Ever. It's always there. You want to walk, work, have sex, exercise, go exploring, do calls like this. You can't do like, anything. And I have, it's really devastating when people contact me now and say, you know, I was a painter or I was, uh, you know, I, I used to love sitting and reading and having a tea in the quiet mm. after a hard day's work. And that gets stolen from you. So again, it's not a competition, but I just want people listening to know just how bad it is. And if you're, if you have tinnitus right now and your family's telling you it's not so bad, you should learn to live with it. Why are you making such a big deal about it? I understand you. So don't worry. There's a whole lot of people around the world who understand you and it's not okay. It should, you shouldn't learn to live with it and you can fix it. So don't listen to any stupid shit anyone says about that because it's awful, but you can fix it. So three and a half years went by and it was only getting worse. Because why wouldn't it? Because I was drinking all the time, doing drugs and just all this stupid shit. And I thought, you know what? Like, it's going to either be silence or suicide. And it was getting to the point, you know, where I was looking up how to commit suicide and things like that, which is pretty dark. But I didn't want to leave my family behind and I didn't want to, you know, be a, just awful. And I had a great life. I liked myself. I lived, was born in Melbourne, Australia, the most livable city in the world for six years. And I'm just going to throw it all away. And yes. so here's what happened. And this is where we link back to me crapping my pants three times a week. <laughs> and I got to thinking, you know what? And I remembered, I was very angry that I didn't think about it earlier, but I remember thinking, you know, I was able to fix my ulcerative colitis in just weeks when my doctor, not only a doctor, a specialist, a gastroenterologist, whose bread and butter was that specific situation and he couldn't fix it. Maybe, just maybe, this ENT, these ENTs, I've seen many of them, by the way, mm. maybe these ENTs are no different. Maybe their, their prognosis, so, you know, the diagnosis is tinnitus and the prognosis is that it's going to be for life. Like that's sort of, the, for the people watching, that's sort of how they say, you know, what's to be expected? Stage four cancer, three cancer, you're going to die. You've got three months, that sort of thing. Maybe their prognosis was wrong and maybe they couldn't prescribe anything useful because they literally say, and you know what? Strap your intellectual seatbelt in for this. You're going to love this. Strap it right in for this. <laughs> so many of my clients, I was going to say patients, but they're not patients. I'm not a doctor. I don't want to be associated with doctors. So many of my patients, they go to an ENT and these are like, people say to me, Liam, like what's, what's your demographic of people you work with? Like, it's got to be like construction workers or ex-military, right? I say, no, it's everybody. It's everybody because tinnitus is not just caused by a loud noise. It's caused by um, a myriad of so many different things. And so I have single mothers, like people get tinnitus from ototoxic medications, stress, a knock to the head, loud noise, um, depression, uh, lack of sunlight, nutritional deficiency, veganism. Uh, people have come to me after they've been sexually abused, after like awful things, like using Bluetooth headphones. And so there's oxalate toxicity, salicylate toxicity. Oh my God, you name it, I've seen it. You name it, I've seen it. Like heavy metal poisoning, parasites, mold, root canals, breast implants will do it. The list goes on. Basically, we'll get to the foundation in a second, but it's mitochondrial dysfunction is the cause of tinnitus, in my opinion. Anyway, so my patients of all that, all those sort of, and even people who aren't sick, they don't think they're sick. They'll go to the doctor, they'll go to the ENT and they'll say, you know, doc, I just, I don't know where it came from. I had a normal life, you know, I drunk on the weekends and I was just using my headset during work. And sure, I was a little bit stressed out, but I've got this project coming up. My boss is riding my ass. And, you know, I just had a regular life like everyone else. And my friends smoke sometimes and they do this. And why did they get, to, why did I get tinnitus and not them? Mm. And I'm going to sit them down and you go, well, you know, I'm a very qualified person. Here's the diagram of the year. Let me show you this. Let me just put on my white lab coat to make you feel real safe at my name tag. Yes, that is where I study. You should, you should hail me. I am the chief. And they'll say, I, and again, I hope your intellectual seatbelt is strapped on nice and tight for this one. They'll say it's idiopathic subjective tinnitus. So idiopathic for your listeners means, and I'm not making this up and you can, you can uh, confirm this too, I'm sure. Idiopathic literally means it came out of nowhere. It's magic. It's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. So they will sit there with a straight face and tell someone who's 45 years old 
and has never had tinnitus in their life. And now we've had it for the last two months. It's destroying their life. And they will say, it's, it's come out of nowhere. It's, it's like, just tell the truth and say that you don't know. Just say, and some, some ENTs do do that, but most don't do that. Because how would that look if people started going around town saying, you know, that doctor there, he's, uh, he doesn't know where tinnitus has come from. But what else does he know? So they don't say that. You know, people are people and they'll do people things, right? Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yes, so where was I? So, yes, the, the veganism thing. So I went vegan again after I realized, well, perhaps maybe this is it. You know, it's the plants. The plants are going to solve me. It's all the antioxidants and the vitamins and meat is so dangerous. And how can I be so stupid? I should go vegan again. It's so obvious. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I did it. I went raw vegan again. I did the whole thing again. And you know what? It actually helped. It actually helped again. But the misconception that I was under Bianca is that I was thinking, I didn't realize that it wasn't actually, and look, I look at plants like medicine, meat as food. That's how I kind of see it. But regardless, the misconception that I was under is I thought that there was something really healthy about the plants and that was what was making me better. But what it really was, was that I was cutting out all the garbage. Not only did I go raw vegan, but I stopped doing drugs. I stopped smoking weed which is the same thing. So I began alcohol. Um, I stopped the sugar. I stopped the coffee. I stopped the alcohol. I stopped the bread. You know, I stopped all this sort of stuff. And I was eating just raw greens, which basically, you know, you're not digesting like really anything. So it's kind of like a fast anyway. Yeah. And I got better. And I got about 20% better um, in about two months. And then I plateaued. And I wasn't getting any better anymore. And I wasn't feeling that good. Mm -hmm. And so I looked online and looked at all my, my vegan influencers who we all know just know everything about everything. You know, I don't know everything about everything, but those guys are in a whole fucking different league on their own. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good Lord. Anyway, so yeah, we, we weren't talking about that, but you know, and it turned out just my luck. They were going to be attending a, I forget what it was called, but like a vegan festival in our hometown, Chiang Mai. So that's right in just people, people who don't know it's North in the mountains. I used to live there for two years actually. And yeah. so I thought, well, you know what? It must be that the quality of the plants that I'm eating in um, Australia is not good enough. And so I'm going to have to go and get some of that sun fruit and durian fruit and all those, Australia. you know, Australians are all spraying it with the pesticides, which is true. But um, I thought that's what was holding me back was because I wasn't like, you know, vegan enough or whatever that means. Right. And so I, I bought a ticket, I bought a one-way ticket and I thought I'm going to go to Chiang Mai and I'm not going to come back without silence. I'm going to do it. Mm. And I got to Chiang Mai um, and keep in mind people, that it, no wait, I got to Chiang Mai and again, after about one month, my tinnitus got better again. Mm. Now here's another misconception that I had. And I only realized this when I back, and by the way, the whole time I thought I was repairing my hair cells in my ears. That's how little I knew. If you go back and watch my old videos, you'll see me talk about how like this stuff was repairing hair cells. Because what else did I know? I only knew that this stuff helped me. It was helping other people. The ENT said it was hair cells. So it must be hair cells. That's I thought like, you know, that's what it was. So I get better. I'm getting better and better and better. And it's, 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 it's quite something to behold. And I'm sure you have experienced this yourself as of your clients with the people who follow you. When you have something so bad and so invasive and so destructive for so many years and no one says you can get better and there's nothing you can do and you just have to learn to live with it. And then you not only get better, but you get better in your effort on your dime and something you started to figure out. That's like a feeling like nothing else. That's a feeling of elation. That's like, you know, I'm sure is only the only thing that would probably top that is like holding your firstborn child. I'm sure mm -hmm. I don't have children, but I'm just guessing anyway. So what I didn't realize though, was that it, 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 you know, I realized this years later, it wasn't really the fruits and the, whatever I was eating, I was eating so much sugar that was doing it. It was the weather. I was spending all day in the sun, getting blasted with the radiation of the sun in a good way, healing my body, amazing mm -hmm. stuff. And so what happened again is I plateaued again. But by this stage, I'd already reduced my tinnitus by about 50%. And so I was like in, it had been how long? Three, three months. So I'd had tinnitus for three and a half years in total, tinnitus and hyperacusis, and they were both going down uh, and it had been three months already, three and a half months. And so that was pretty amazing. 
to me. That was incredible. And I was telling everybody about it and I was like posting on the forums and they were like, go fuck yourself. You're an idiot. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, okay. I won't do that. It's incredible, right? It's I don't incredible. Like to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I just, it blew my mind. I was like, don't you guys want to get better? Like, yeah. Anyway, so mm-hmm. I, I, by that point, I, I start to really regain my love of life because mm-hmm. things, it's really bad at night. It was really bad at nighttime, but during the day, if I was walking outside, especially on the streets of Bangkok now, you know, where it's, where it's loud, if I was walking outside in Chiang Mai, uh, buses and people beeping their horns and stuff, I wouldn't really hear it that much. It was, and, and you know, nothing really hurt my, my hyperacusis is like almost basically gone. So my life was back. I was like, this is awesome. So I took a, I took like a holiday, right? And I chose, uh, I, looked, I looked on skyscanner.com. Mm-hmm. I'd always wanted to go to Eastern Europe. And I chose, you know, where am I going to go? And I just picked Eastern Europe and Bucharest, Bucharest popped up, Bucharest, Romania. And uh, so I went there um, and it was an $800 one-way ticket. And I was slowly losing all my money because remember, I barely had a job back then. So I just had some savings and money from parents and whatnot. And so I went to Bucharest and um, I remember this so well. I got there at 3 a.m. in the middle of winter and it is cold cold snowing sideways shh, like all this crazy cold is insane so i i'm in like this i'm in a t-shirt and shorts and i i get off the plane you know it's like a 24-hour journey brutal brutal i get off the plane and i'm waiting at, at the exit i've gone through immigration and whatnot and i go you know what like i just looked out at the cold and it was like negative two degrees or something crazy ridiculous like canada sort of stuff maybe not as cold as canada but it's freezing freezing yeah so i go outside at 3 a.m in the middle of winter in bucharest romania and it's i'm start getting covered in snow straight away i'm just like it's almost, almost like a meditative state yeah and i'm just there like this and i instantly notice my tinnitus begin to drop and that's the first time that i ever correctly connected a, a stimuli to the result so mm-hmm. you know i used to think it was the plants that was fixing my tinnitus then it turned out to be, I was removing the junk food. I used to think it was the fruit and all the healthy plants in Thailand. It was reducing my tinnitus even more, but it turned out to be the sun. And this is when I started to slowly realize, like, it looks like there's more than one way to skin a cat. And that's why when I talk about tinnitus now, I tell people, you know, it's not just, it's not just an enema. It's not just a fast. It's not just, you know, getting more sun. It's all these, it's all these different things because who knows what you're missing out on? Who knows what you need? Right. And I always tell people, you know, safe and slow, but all that sort of stuff. So I, I start looking up cold temperature therapy and I see there's all these communities and all this information and pretty legitimate scientific research. Now I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to pretend that I can look at any paper and understand it hundred percent, but I can't, but I n- now do have a pretty um, rudimentary understanding of literature and so on. So yes. even back then I had an understanding that, you know, cold temperature therapy seems like it works. So what I would do is in Bucharest in my little, oh, you should have seen my apartment. It was such a shithole, <laughs> literally like in a basement, like a bathtub and oh God, I, it was great times though. And the girls, I was dating a girl actually when I was there, she was oh, Eastern European women. It's ridiculous. You don't even, you don't even. so <laughs> amazing. So I, was, I would sit in the bathtub, uh, you know, no clothes and empty bathtub, no water. And I would just turn on the cold faucet and I would just let it fill up to the top. And that took about 10 minutes and that was brutal, but I was determined, you know? Um, and then of course I was, I'm a very tall guy. So I'd be kind of in the fetal position. So it was really, if someone would have seen that from the window, they would have called the cops straight away. That was some weird shit. <laughs> so I'd sit, <laughs> I'd sit in there like this, yeah. just like doing this, you know, it's like, look, I'm trying to commit suicide or something. Mm. And uh, it helped. I did that for about another two months. Um, cause you know, the visa, you can stay in Chiang Mai for two months, yeah. um, in the Schengen zone in Romania, it's like six months, but I, I'd had enough of it by then. It was very cold and depressing. So at this point it, I was about four months, four and a half months into the journey of trying to get silence. And my tinnitus was down to about 70%, something like that. Um, so I decided to take another trip because now I, and now, and this is a trap that people can fall into. So don't fall for this guys. When you're following my advice and your tinnitus starts to go down closer and closer to the silence and you go, you know, this is hard to do because it is hard. To, it's not easy to follow this advice. It, it really, I'm not going to lie and say that it is because it takes time, it takes perseverance and it can be isolating because you're not really going to be drinking or doing stupid shit with your friends anymore, but don't let that get to you. 
So don't think, well, I'm just going to take a break from Leah's advice. You can take some breaks like on your birthday, but if you're going to pause it for like a month, I can guarantee you, you're going to not come back for like another year. And then you're going to be right back to where you started from. For whatever reason, I find that when people get silence, I tell them do it for like another five months, the same yeah. advice that you used to get silence. And then you can pretty much go back to like 50% of what you're doing. Like I smoke cigars, I drink, but very, very rarely. Um, and I like, I've for like the last two months, I've only slept like four hours a night because of the work I'm doing, but still I'm fine. So, you know, anyway, no tonight is tonight to never come back. So I decided to go to, and this is coming to the end of the story. I decided to go to, uh, Belize, Georgia. And, uh, that was just because I was like, I can go anywhere. Like, it was just, I felt like I'd been born again. Like literally felt like I'm sure I felt like what Christians felt like when they get uh, baptized, if that's what it's called, when mm. you know, Duncan sort of thing. Anyway, so I go to Belize and then I start to think, okay, well, still, Bianca, I was still thinking, well, you know, it must be the hair cell thing. It's got to be the hair cell. Looking online, how do you repair cells? How do you fix cells? What about the, what's ways to fix cells? And there were some things like, uh, you know, exercise. So I started exercising more. Um, there were things like, you know, proper sleep. So I would just like, you know, make an effort to really go to bed early. But the one thing that I found that really seemed amazing to me was fasting, but not mm -hmm. just fasting, dry fasting. So that means no food, no water, no medications, and no even contact with water. And by the way, guys, if you're watching this right now, don't just go jump into it. You have to speak to your doctor and do it safely because it is, it is full on, you know, it really is. And so for a month I did, um, four, four, four times four day dry fasts. So out of seven days, I would spend two of them, uh, no food, no water, no nothing, just, just dry fasting. And I got to tell you after the second one I did, my tinnitus for like three days went right back up to how bad it was in the beginning. And the high producers came back too. And I thought, I cannot believe it. I, ca I cannot believe it. I've, I've undone all the hard work that I put in. I cannot believe I've done this. Um, but thankfully it went back down again. And I thought, you know, it was, it was getting better after the fast, not during the fast. And it's something for people to understand that when you do a fast, it doesn't really matter what happens to your ears, you know, unless it gets unbearable. The magic happens after it and you can read books like the phoenix protocol and, and uh you know um what's that guy's name uh i'll remember it later but the Phoenix protocol is really good they, they study it in russia actually dry fasting it's very amazing so i did the third and fourth one and then on the fourth one um i woke up on the fourth day and my tinnitus was completely gone i remember it because i was in this again this shit apartment in belize I had to walk through this tunnel to get to my apartment and the guys in these tunnels, look, I, I swear to God, every night I thought I was going to get like gang raped. It was awful. Like dangerous guys shooting dice in the corner with like a dog. I was like, someone must be playing a joke. Like you guys really, really come on. And so they were nice though, but you know, I just wouldn't talk to them. <laughs> anyway. So, you know, on the fourth day I woke up and I immediately thought something was wrong because I thought this doesn't feel right. What's going on? And what the problem was, Bianca, is that I could hear everything. I could hear the birds outside my window. I could hear the stones underneath people's feet as they walked by in that, in that tunnel. I could hear the air con like blowing in the, in the, in the ceiling. I could hear the trees. I could, I could hear everything. And I got to be honest, I cried again, lots of crying in the story. I, I cried for like four hours, um, in the fetal position and I didn't want to move because I thought if I move, I'm going to ruin it. And uh, eventually I had to move because, you know, I didn't want to be mummified in that position. And I moved and I walked around and I, you know, my, got my life back. And I was so happy that I had silence that I actually went all around and I went through all those countries again. So I went back and I went to Chiang Mai, I went to Bucharest again, and I went to Belize again. And then I went to a, cl a couple of other countries and then I went home. Um, and that's my story of silence. It's pretty amazing stuff, huh? Mm. And so that's probably the first time I've ever told the entire story. We're missing out on a couple of little things here and there, which I might have forgotten, but I take the entire story. And then, yeah, so we can talk about, you know, what happens after that and how, how I, you know, there's a whole other story after it too. But uh, yeah, so if you have any questions about that or any comments. Yeah, of course. I have a lot of questions. That was a lot there and just 
What an incredible story. I always find it so interesting with a lot of people that suffer with any type of chronic condition or chronic illness and something that I find, like everyone that I speak to that gets to this point, there's so much of it that comes from childhood. And it's really interesting that you also have that story. It's, I don't really know necessarily the correlation, but there is this whole AC studies and so much of the, the childhood experience that does come out and ends up being so much of our purpose as well, which is mm -hmm. just so incredible that you've had to mm -hmm. go through all of that experience, all of that, and all those layers of suffering and crying, like you're saying, and mm -hmm. expressing those emotions and being in those states of being. When you walk out, and I'm sure you resonate with this, when you finally got the silence, it's like, life just looks different. It's just like, I wouldn't change it for the world. I don't know if you resonate with that, but it was so terrible. But now it's just like, everything just is so much, so much different, so much more, there's so much wisdom, there's so much knowledge and you can help so many people with that. So there's a really yeah. big suffering story, but you've also now got this impact, impact on the world, which is exactly what's needed, do you know, in this yeah. time and space. And regarding the, the, yeah, regarding the suffering and turning it into something useful, I have an, another interesting point on that, which is mm. that, and if, if you're watching this right now and you have tinnitus, you're going to think I'm crazy, but you're probably going to be saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I've fixed hundreds and hundreds of people's ears all around the world, rich, poor, black, white, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, and they all say the same thing they come to me with tinnitus and they're like this is the worst thing ever i don't know what to do can you please help me my life is over i wish i'd never had this it's so unfair and it's all you know makes perfect sense it's horrible it really is when they get silence when they get silence they say to me excuse me they say you know what it was actually a bit of a gift mm -hmm. Bro, it was a gift because not only did they silence their tinnitus and show they have the the you know the courage and the and the and the intestinal fortitude to be able to do so mm -hmm. but a lot of their other issues that they thought were they didn't even realize they had or they thought for life also went away too their vision their sleep their things like sexual function for men and women uh, their mm -hmm. skin improves and everything improves and they go now that i know that i can beat tinnitus and beat all these other things and i know how to do it they just feel mm -hmm. confident in that if they get some sort of disease or ailment you know i'm sure with some exceptions of course like some genetic problem if they have like some problem in the future or their family members do uh they can fix it and in themselves mm -hmm. and a funny story actually my mother actually had really bad tinnitus um this was after i this was like a year ago actually so well after i'd silenced mine and she just it was really bad and it was affecting her and she came to me and i i silenced her tinnitus as well and if i would have never have, have got it myself and silenced it she probably oh, would be yeah. suffering big time and she would and you know she actually and you know of course you know she did this she, she went to an ent first if you can believe it <laughs> like her oh, own man. son does this does this for a living and has like really and not to, not to say i'm arrogant or cocky but i have the most success stories in the world when it comes to silence and tinnitus yeah and it's not surgery it's not a medication it's not expensive it's not dangerous or anything like that that's what makes it so amazing but my mother, mother's a mother and she's a nurse and so she went to a doctor and the doctor mm -hmm. was like yeah there's nothing you can do and she comes to me and then i fix her in like two months and so it really is a wow. gift and yeah i agree with i agree with what you said for sure yeah it's hard for people to hear that during the time in fact my book <laughs> that's coming soon is about that so it's going to be maybe a slap in the face for people who haven't experienced that end yet yeah. but what you'll notice when you look back at your story is simultaneously you were always actually healing even in the times where it really sucked um mm -hmm. but taking it back like a few steps as well so i really resonate with the whole vegan diet a lot of people ask me what diet i do and i honestly just try not to fear food anymore because i yo-yoed so many different diets i tried everything myself as well and veganism helped me get rid of parasites which is where i experienced tinnitus mm -hmm, but yeah. not to any extreme that you're you're saying it was just like here and there i'd have a little bit of ringing but it wasn't something that impacted my life other symptoms were much worse for me in in my healing journey um but what i found actually interesting and i'm not sure if you resonate with this as well it was actually my body alkalizing itself through that experience through going on that diet because i'd cut out those small things and just like 
you know, stopped, mm -hmm. you know, partying yeah. as well and stopped doing all of that. It definitely went through a very similar story to you. Drinking is the only thing to like be able to help yeah, me get out in public. I couldn't speak. So it was like, I'm just yeah, going to drink. I, I, if I'm drunk, I no one will know. You know, I've listened, so. listened to your podcast and all your stories and your story is unbelievable. It's, you should be dead. You should actually probably be dead. It's uh, yeah. the whole thing is just incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, it just sounds like a, a movie of some sort. Like it's, yeah, yeah it homeless, does. learning to walk again, um, yeah. all of the, the experiences. And what's so funny is all of the same things helped me too. It's like we just had to get to that understanding of the layered system. And I think that's what I'm seeing as well with you. It was like, okay, diet is a layer. And then you were like detoxing. And then you were going through all the different layers in order to finally get the whole entire picture. And I think mm -hmm. if we just focus on the symptom, which unfortunately the medical industry only is doing that at the moment. You know, they see mm -hmm. the mind, body, and the brain. Like they see everything as separate. Every organ is separate. When really, yes. from my understanding of healing my entire body, everything speaks to itself. All of our cells mm -hmm. are connected, you know, intellectually mm -hmm. and also physically to, to one another. Yeah. So amazing that you were able to just go through that journey, pick up each layer and now put all of that together for people and be like, you know what, here's the bundle and what suits you, which kind of leads me into asking you as well about what's actually helping people. Because I know you spoke about mold as well, which is a huge, huge problem. I also wanted to ask you a little quick in, in, in a question there too, that I didn't get a chance to, when you mm -hmm. moved from Melbourne to Chiang Mai, did you feel like you may have detoxed the mold as well? Like, was that something that you noticed as well? Okay. That's a really, that's one thing I forgot to mention, actually. And that's a really, really good point because mm -hmm. get this after I moved out, it was, so I spent two months in Chiang Mai. I spent yeah two months in Chiang Mai, two months in Bucharest and two months in Belize. And then I went around a bit more of the world. By the time I got to Belize, um, which was about five months in, my mother sent me a message and she said, you know, I went into your room and I was going to clean out your closet and she opened it and she said it was full of mold. Like the whole thing was just, everything was covered. So there was a, there was a, some sort of leak or there was a infestation or I carried something in on, on my clothes. And that was what was causing the, um, the nasal problems and the indigestion. Uh, the uh, congestion. And I'm sure that's probably what also contributed to my tinnitus as well. So it would have been bad diet, drums, um, and, uh, and mold. And I tell people this, I say, um, I say, you know, when you come to me and you say, look, I, I got tinnitus because of an ototoxic medication like uh, Accutane or something or, you know, Wellbutrin or Finasteride or something like that. Or they say, look, I got it from a, uh, an explosion. Like I get an ex-Marine or a military guy come to me. Or they say, I got it while I was pregnant, you know, or after birth or something, whatever. And so I say to people, I'm like, yeah, that's good to know. But that's just the straw that broke the camel's back. It could have been anything else. But I'm more interested in the p previous 10 years of your life. I need to know about that. So to, to the mold, yeah, I, was, I would say I was definitely detoxing. And the sun will help with that too. Yeah. Um, and also I, I want to also point out that I completely agree with you, um, about the eating plants, killing parasites, because mm. that's exactly what it does. It's amazing. Meat can't do that, but, yeah. um, certain herbs and, and plants can definitely do that. And I, yeah. and I tell people, you know, people say to me, what's the perfect diet for tinnitus or for health? I'm like, it doesn't exist. So stop thinking that. And I yeah. tell people the best diet is probably a cyclical one. Because people, when it comes to parasites, they cause so many problems in the body. Same with mold. And, you know, it's unavoidable. Like you, you pet a dog or you walk barefoot on the ground or you just happen to eat the wrong thing, whether it's a, a, a steak that's been undercooked or you, you like, you know, even you have sex with somebody, you can get a parasite from them. That's what it's just touching. And so mm -hmm. I say you're always going to need to be, yeah, plants, plants have a, an amazing role and you need plants and you need meat. And there's just these two camps of people that say, oh, mm -hmm. you should never eat plants. You should never eat meat. It's like, guys, it, it doesn't have to be so dogmatic. Shut up. Just work together. You each have your own benefits. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone can have it their own way. And some people say to me, like, you know, oh, Liam, I, they, I, I have, a, a, you know, a reputation and people go, oh, Liam, that's like the guy who's like the, you only eat meat to get silenced. And I'm like, no, I never said that. I never, ever, ever said that. But I have said that you want to just reduce the plant intake and increase the meat intake. But people think, oh, I'll follow Liam's advice. I'll just, 
go carnivore today. I'm like, that's a great way to destroy your health, just doing it too fast and too quickly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I, yeah. I felt the same, really similar. The veganism helped to a degree. And then it got to a point where I was like, I just feel tired, depleted. And then I just put on tons of weight afterwards because yeah. I restricted myself so much and then adding new things in and like all these switching and really, yeah. I would say like, this would be an argument. It's better not to fear it. Like it's going to cause yeah. just as much cellular issues. If you're just fearing food constantly, choose what works for you. Like you said, slow burner, you know? Yeah. I, I like it. that because I, I, I like that. Don't fear it because some people will come to me and, and be like, Oh God, like I really messed up. I ate this or like, Oh, I'm so worried about this party. I'm going to, there's going to be this food. And I'm like, dude, who cares? Just eat it. Well, just eat it once and then don't do it again or just don't eat it or or if you do eat it don't hate yourself like what what is the benefit of like self-flagellation after it's already done forget about it move on so right. i know that's like easier said than done because some people do have genuine problems with that but you know it's just the the, the critical thinking or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, it's just the thought. Something that helps me actually is like when I'm eating something in particular and I know, you know, gluten or dairy for me used to be like massive fear food. Like, oh my God, if I eat mm -hmm. gluten, I'm going to be disabled for like the next week. Like it was so yeah. bad, the thought patterns. It's like when you're looking at it, just say, oh my goodness, I'm so lucky. Like this is nourishing my body. It's food. Mm -hmm. I just want to enjoy yeah. it. And yes, there yeah. are things that we need to be aware of, like, Awareness over fear, I'd say, would be what I would yeah. suggest for people. Yeah. Awareness. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'll, put, I'll put your name on it, but I'm gonna steal that. I'm gonna tell. Yeah, people, tell people I that. think that's a right. that's a killer one as well. And good. yeah, going back to everything now as well. So yeah, I feel like we're on definitely the same page of all those different things, and I love that you've put all your knowledge together to be able to help people because. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine what that would feel like to not be able to hear. And I think a lot of people in the Lyme community would agree with you as well when mm -hmm. they say like their symptoms are so disabling that they feel like, yeah, even to lose a leg or an arm or have cancer or whatever, there's another correlation of like they get a lot of empathy too and they could also articulate themselves. Whereas like mm -hmm. when you're experiencing, you know, you're losing sound, chronic symptoms, all of that mm -hmm. stuff, yeah, you stop being able to articulate yourself and it's very isolating, yeah. very overwhelming. And so do you have any tips on that for anyone that is experiencing that as well? Like, do you mean specifically tips like how to deal with, you know, people not thinking that you're telling the truth or people thinking that like, it's not as bad as you say it is? I that's guess that whole or... experience, but that feeling of that isolation, because there's like, there's like this pain point that people get to where we say that, like, we don't mean to compare, but it's like, we are really in this situation and no one's listening. Like, is there any okay. tips that you teach around that? Or is it just like taking your power back? You know, I would honestly you... say, yeah, I would honestly say in terms of, of dealing with that, it's actually more about finding the right person who can help you. Because yeah. it, depending on what happened, like, okay, so you've got the condition, right? You've got Lyme or you've got tinnitus or whatever. It's a horrible situation, either one. Mm -hmm. And so what happens next is a lot of it, unfortunately, is luck based upon who you find. And that can really make or break you. So mm -hmm. let's say that someone gets bitten by a tick and they get Lyme or they get, they get the Lyme from however you can get it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they find a forum and it's like, Lime Fighters United on Facebook or something, mm -hmm. and it's run by like, you know, a real fucking Karen. And then she's like, Oh, we don't allow <laughs> this, and we don't allow this. And it's just like, This is making it so much worse. And you're like, Hey, like, I got better from doing, like, from taking this thing. And it's like, No, delete. But if yes. someone's like, Today was a really bad day, it's like, Oh, it's like, What the hell is this? Like, it's like everyone's treating like a diary. So I think if people find you, you know, they're going to see your story because I've listened to, I said, I listened to many of your podcasts and it's incredible um, because it's, it's constructive, it's productive and it's informative. You know, it's like, it's actually, it's helpful. It's productive. Like, you know, we're not just here to be, um, it's a basically who's, who's got the worst problems and oh my God, let's all cuddle and cry, which you know, there's a time and a place, but it's not when you're trying to fix it. And it's informative because you actually tell people what to do. So yeah. as long as they have like those three things and they, they're looking for a person, like I, I know it sounds um, arrogant and, and it is, but when someone has tinnitus, I really hope that they find me and not another person's forum because there are people out there who will like, I got to tell you, 
uh, Bianca, there's forums in which I won't name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just touch on this uh, briefly because I know we're coming up to about an hour now. But, you know, after I silenced my tinnitus, you know, your question was like, you know, what led you to your purpose and, and things like that? Yeah. Well, what led me to actually do this and actually tell people about, as I said, the very first thing I said, what led me to do this was actually responsibility because you know as when i saw when i got tinnitus i was about 20 22 when i silenced it i was just about to turn 25 and so i'd grown up a lot and matured a lot and you know i came from the world of tinnitus from the point of someone who had it and then i turned into someone who didn't have it and being someone who had it i knew exactly that you know there's there's no hope out there it's all we're really it's just it's a couple of people who sort of were helping but it was more merely just like positive talk but I got to tell you, and maybe you can relate to this, but when someone is actually trying to help and they actually can't, they don't have any actionable steps and they can't fix you and they say, it's not that bad. You can learn to live with it. It's okay. That actually made me feel worse because I was like, I, like, I trust this person, but they're telling me that I have to live with it. So I feel, I feel worse. Like it should, I wish they would put more effort into finding a solution. But anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Back, just I'll finish off my story. So basically, when I got silenced, this is after I got back from, I think I was in, I was back in Belize for the second time. And I came back and I started posting on the forums um, in these tinnitus forums and different Facebook groups. And I was like, I did it. This is how I did it. If you, I'm not selling anything, if you want help. And people would comment on it and be like, yeah, you should go fucking kill yourself. And like, you know, I hope your, I hope your fucking family gets tinnitus. Crazy shit insane shit i was like what the hell is this and so i decided if i wanted to help people and they did say that by the way i'm not exaggerating at all oh it's i people. resonate with that too i have one of those yeah. stories don't worry <laughs> oh people can be awful they can be awful yeah and so i decided that if i was going to actually help people i was going to have to just have total control over the content Mm -hmm. and so I started a YouTube channel, I started Instagram, and then eventually, you know, I want, if you go back to my very early content and like my courses and my books and stuff, like most of my stuff is free, but I do sell some stuff. I did back then too. Mm -hmm. If you go back to my free stuff, you'll see me talk about, as I said, like stereo cilia and it's broken and this is how you fix it and yada, yada, yada. I still, I was still fixing people, but I didn't really understand how it was working, but I didn't know why. Like I didn't have like the, the, you know, this is why it's working. And so people would like take that and be like, you know, see, you're, you're a scammer because you like back then, see, you don't know how, why it's working. And I was like, does it matter? Because it's safe. I'm not telling people to hang upside down for 10, 10 hours a day, take an experimental drug, get a surgery that could go wrong. That's what they were saying. That's the funny thing. These people in these forums are like, oh, this new experimental surgery is coming out. They have to sever the vestibular cochlear nerve and reattach it. It's like, you guys are insane. And I say to them, you know, guys, and even today, I, I, even today, it's funny. I used to have a lot of haters back then, but I ran out of them because they all tried my stuff and now they have silence. And now they, I get emails and it's like, I used to hate you and, you know, I thought you were scum of the earth and I sent some horrible things to you. But eventually I just kept seeing so many results and I was only getting worse. And I followed your advice and now I'm better. So I want to apologize and say thank you. So it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. But mm -hmm. I still have some detractors today. And I always say to them, like, you know, they, they haven't tried my advice. And I'm like, guys, what's the worst that can happen? You know, yeah, you, give it you, a you, you cut coffee for a little bit of time. You cut out the alcohol. You get some more sunlight. You go sleep. Go live your life. Go fall mm -hmm. in love. Have a great life. Put down the video game controller. Stop watching this porn. Stop living this life inside. Go outside, eat a steak, go and mm. stop the smoking marijuana. Cut out the medication if it's safe with your doctor. And they go, no, that's crazy. My doctor says that's crazy. And so I'm like, okay, I wish you the best of luck. You're obviously just not mentally ready for it. And that's absolutely Exactly. Fine. I so, think yeah, we get to a breaking point, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you yeah. had that as well. And it sounds like you did, but like we get to a point where we're like, I am done. And I've said that a hundred times. Like mm. I got to a point where I was mm. like, I, I'm done. Like I can't do yeah. this anymore. We have to start choosing ourselves. And I would ask those people, has your doctor helped you at all? And if your doctor hasn't helped you at all, then who is serving you? Because you're paying them, even if you're Australian and you get Medicare, you're still paying that person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, and I would ask them, has your, not only has your doctor <laughs> ever helped you, but has your doctor helped anyone? Yeah. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Like when it, just want to make this clear for everyone watching. I don't have a, a hatred of doctors. I really yeah, don't. I agree. 
but when it comes to doctors, I see there's there's two different kinds. There's the doctors who work with the acute problems, like the emergency room doctors and the microparamedics. Like you know, if I get if I get uh, like stabbed or I get hit by a car or like my um, I have like a you know heaven forbid a heart attack or something like that. Mm. There's nothing that a couple of herbs and sunlight's going to do for me. I'm going to die unless I get to the hospital. I'm going to get an yeah. EKG. I got I need I need adrenaline. I need lots of help. Right? I might even might even need a um, a defibrillator. But when it comes to the doctors who are dealing with like chronic disease, like uh, like uh, rheumatologists and a hematologist and nephrologists and uh, otolaryngologists, gastroenterologists, all the ologists, right? The specialists, most of them have not helped a single person in their entire career. And I don't say that. I don't want people going to their local mm -hmm. doctor with pitchforks and fire <laughs> and going like, this guy on the internet said you're the devil. Because no, just forget about it. Just move on with your life. But I have to be honest, Bianca, and you probably agree. Like when it comes to acute problems, those doctors who work 12-hour shifts are heroes. They are heroes. But when it comes yes. to the doctors, like if you have a rash on your skin and you go to a derm dermatologist, good fucking luck, okay? Because they're just going to tell you to take it's cream. And yeah, maybe it'll make it's like this is the thing. If you go to a dermatologist, right, mm. and they say the problem is localized to that area of the skin or this area of the skin, it's you already know they're a moron. It's that really doesn't have much. Maybe you agree or not, but it really doesn't have much to do with the skin at all. It's just a symptom of probably like a parasitic infection or a tick infection or you know a mold or a dietary problem. And they go, I'll just put this cream on three times a day, and you're like, thanks, doc. That'll be seventy dollars. Great, I'm broke now. Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of my view on on, uh, on you know chronic versus acute doctors. There's a time and a place. Mm -hmm. you know, time and a place. Yeah, I fully agree. Don't go to the hospital if you have a chronic condition. Find someone yeah. who's actually healed, like Liam or myself. Or there's so many of us now. Even the people that were in my community originally are now healing people themselves. And so follow those people, trust those people, and believe those people because you know, they've experienced it and, and you can tell yeah. when someone's really been able to heal themselves. Like you can look at their face and see the difference. You can see the, the visual proof, but yes, we should still have medical practitioners involved in our life, but just ones that serve us. And, you know, I used to pick and choose. So I'd see like a majority, like a handful of doctors and I would take little bits and pieces from them, but I always went back to myself and said, Hey, yeah. Do I really want to have that? And sometimes I made mistakes along the way, but then it always helped me grow and be like, okay, well, yeah. maybe I should have done the mold test a little earlier, or maybe I should have done this a little bit earlier. And it's just a growing, you know, experience that we go through when we do go through chronic conditions. But yeah, trust the people that have healed because they know what they're talking yeah. about. And um, yeah, that's the yeah, secret. I would, I would agree. And I would tell people one, and I think this will probably you know, I think you're like this. I just want to tell something about hearing tests real, real quick. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that, yeah, go, I say to people, if people want to go to an ENT, um, just because on the topic of tinnitus, I actually don't mm -hmm. tell them not to go. I say, yeah, you can go because they're probably going to use like an otoscope and, uh, you know, see if there's any inflammation or any earwax or something. And sometimes people go and they get like a steroid or something and they, or they get like, a, they've got inflammation on their um, eardrum and they can take something to fix it. And that does happen. So let's be honest, there are some inst instances where they do help, but it's really the low hanging fruit. But what I tell people is when you go to an ENT, no matter what they say, don't let them have any power over the way that you feel. Because I tell them, you know, and this is just, again, this is just crazy. So let's say you get tinnitus. Okay, so let's, this is what happens, okay? You get tinnitus from a myriad of problems, probably a combination of things. You go to an ENT and he's probably going to have an, an audiologist uh, connected to his office or maybe he'll just do the test himself. He'll give you what's called an audiogram, which is where you sit in a little soundproof booth, kind of feels like a, a music recording studio. You put on these big headphones on either side uh, and you have two buttons. And what he does is he sits in a separate room with a little window looking at you and he'll play these different beeps of varying pitch so like you know one will be like Shh, mm, mm. like it sounds funny but it's like that right mm -hmm. in different ears at different volumes and so what happens is you sit there with your two little buttons like a dumbass and mm -hmm. basically press the corresponding button to the ear left or right when you hear it now what happens inevitably is the fact that when you're in a soundproof booth anyone with tinnitus will know this when you're in a quiet environment you can hear your tinnitus more so you're in a soundproof booth with headphones on your tinnitus is blaring, whether it's in one ear or both of them. Eventually, what is going to happen is that they're going to play a sound 
that is either quiet enough or is the same sound as your tinnitus that you won't hear it and you will miss it so you won't press the button. Mm -hmm. Then the audiogram uh, concludes. You step outside, they give you the audiogram with X's and O's to represent left and right. And they're gonna say, look, you have hearing loss in this exact spot that your tinnitus is. And the person will go, oh my God, you're right. I do have hearing loss, I didn't hear that. But it's not hearing loss, is it? Because they just couldn't hear the sound because of the interference of their tinnitus. And then they take that fact and go, well, hearing loss is caused by broken stereocilia. You said that you went to a concert last week, so it's definitely broken stereocilia. There's nothing you can do. So let's put you on some antidepressants and let's give you some $6,000 headphones. And I'll tell you, maybe we, I'm sure we have to finish soon, but I want to tell one more story. No, really keep going. Surprising. I'm loving this. Yeah. I got, I, got, I, got, I got so many stories, but this one, this one is one of my favorites because it's mm -hmm. so disgusting. So two, two and a half, three years ago, I filmed a documentary in the United States on tinnitus. It was very amateur, but I managed to get some interviews with some amazing doctors. Mm -hmm. When I was there, I didn't interview this doctor, but I went with a friend of mine. She was a lovely lady. She's probably watching this now. Hi, how you doing, sweetheart? Mm -hmm. And I went with her. She's in Los Angeles. And I went with her because she's, I was helping her still, but she still wanted to go and see this guy in Los Angeles in California who was supposed to be the best tinnitus and hyperacusis person in the United States. And so she's like, you should come along. And I was like, I would love to. And so I came along and, you know, basically just what I described to you happened. So I got the hearing test. And when, when, you know, she was inside the booth getting the hearing test done, he actually said some pretty um, derogatory things about her as well, which is kind of messed up anyway. He's supposed to be a health expert. So we finished the hearing test. We go into the office and it's just like a sales pitch. He pushes forward the sheet of paper and goes, yep, this is the, where you've got the hearing loss and blah, blah, blah. And then he goes into this like 10 minute rant. Like I gotta say as well, he was very like low energy like this the whole time. Like, yeah, we'll do this. As soon as he gets to talking about this earpiece he wants to sell, he's like, all right, step right up, step right up. So I've got some amazing features here. It's <laughs> so good, it's this and that. It's gonna wait until you see this, wait until you see the payment plan, you're gonna love it, blah, blah, blah. And he's doing all this shit, right? It's just like, where did the other guy go? Where he's got a twin brother, he went into a closet and changed. What just happened? It's unbelievable. And so he finishes his sales pitch, right? And then she goes, uh, this is Liam. He hadn't even acknowledged my existence. This is Liam, you know, he runs, he's here to do a documentary on tinnitus. He silenced his own tinnitus from fasting. He did this, he's very helpful, blah, blah, blah. And he looks at me and he goes, no, no, no word of a lie. He looks at me and he goes, huh? So anyway, you know, this is really, it just keeps going straight back into the pain plan. So he doesn't give a damn of like, you would think, right? You would think that if you were supposed to be the world or the California's expert in tinnitus and hyperacusis, and someone walked into your office and goes, yeah, I fixed it without, you know, and without surgery. And I did it with, you know, fasting and stuff like that. And I gave him like a little bit of information, all this sort of stuff. You would think that he would go, really? Oh my God. God quick, send my assistant in here right now. Take notes. What's your name? How'd you do that? You think that you would be very interested, but you know, the love of money is a very powerful thing. And so I think that there's nothing wrong with money. Money is a good thing. I mean, myself personally, I do very well helping people with tinnitus, which is mm -hmm. great, but I, I do it, you know, by actually helping people and not taking anything from them that I don't deserve. You know what I'm saying? But yes. some people, they just cross, they cross the line and they do it once and they do it twice. And then they lose sight of what's right and what's wrong. And then yeah. eventually their patients, unfortunately just become a number to them and they just see them as a source of income and they just don't care anymore. And I, I've seen, I've had and another thing I've had many, I've got more stories. I, I've many of my clients have to get uh, hearing tests for work as they work on a construction site or they work, you know, for, for whatever business is in America, you have to get hearing tests every six months for some jobs. Mm -hmm. And I've had a handful of cases now, it's like six cases where people will get tinnitus from, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And uh, then they'll get a hearing test at their work and be like, yeah, you have like serious hearing loss here, but it's not, it's tinnitus. And then they'll find me. And then, you know, they've had their tinnitus for like 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, they'll find me and they'll get rid of it in six months, right? This, like, some, some, getting rid of tinnitus can take like three months to a year. So it can take time. Yeah. And they'll go back to that ENT or the audiologist and they'll get the hearing test and they'll get perfect marks, perfect marks. And so they've been getting hearing tests for, you know, years and years. So, you know, let's say they've got 24 hearing tests that have tinnitus for 12 years or something. 
-hmm. And they'll go, yeah, so I fixed it and I followed this guy, Liam. It's amazing. And you can see from my hearing test that I've got perfect hearing and I can tell you that it's gone. And they'll go, it was just a coincidence. Like none of that stuff. We didn't learn about that. It's, <laughs> it's a miracle. And my favorite one they say is that, oh, we, we just did the hearing tests wrong or you, you did it wrong. Even though it's precisely the same amount of hearing, sometimes it's getting worse. And it's very condes and I've had my detractors say this and I've had ENT say this uh, sometimes to me even. They say, you know, Liam, I know you think you're helping people, but you're not. Even though these people have had tinnitus for 10 years, 12 years, it was only getting worse. And they tried everything. They tried the earpieces. They tried all this other stuff, the brain retraining, CBT, habituation, mm -hmm. electromagnetic, uh, electric pulse therapy, you name it. Didn't work. Talk therapy didn't work. Then they find me, goes away. Mm -hmm. and They go, coincidence, just a coincidence. Because it's not, look, then there's, there's, two, there's two reasons for that. There's two reasons. And one of them is, is very malicious. The first reason is that they actually believe that because they are that stupid. You know, they actually believe that. The second reason is that they're, that they're actually saying that because they know it helps, but they also know that it would, they would lose probably about 50% of their income overnight. The markups on those earpieces is in the thousands of dollars and they can prescribe as many people as people walk in with tinnitus. And if you people watching now think that doctors won't do that and they won't fuck you for money, you are delusional. It happens all the time. So it's very, very sorry for the swearing, but it's very true. It's okay. We swear all the time on here. We love it. I think Great. it's very <laughs> expressive and natural and that's what we love to do here. We just want to get deep and honest and truth. And I, I agree with all of that. And I believe there's good and bad in everything. Learn to use your intuition, people. That's the secret. Learn to trust your gut. When you stuff up a few times, that's okay, but just learn from it, you know, mm -hmm. and just, just don't trust everyone that's wearing a white jacket because yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say, no. I would say don't trust them. I yeah. would say you should start off with the, with the basic idea of like what this person's going to tell me is probably horseshit. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a couple of things that, you know, you might get a good doctor or you might get a curious doctor, or you might get one that actually knows it's all bullshit and tries to tell you you know, the mm. truth behind, like, you know, kind of like, can you pick up what I'm putting down? You should probably stop eating those burritos and having two glasses of wine a day sort of thing. But yeah, I agree. It's like, use your intuition. You know, mm. you know it, whether it's like a, a financial advisor, a doctor, a building contractor, you know, a potential suitor or something like that, you should never just believe what people say because yeah. it's pretty easy to open your mouth and make noises. You know what I mean? That's right. Actions, all that stuff. And yeah, have they healed people before? Like yourself, mm. you know, you're doing incredible stuff and it's showing now and everyone can go and jump on your Instagram as well and just see that for themselves. There's so many people saying that you've saved their lives. And so thank yeah. you for not only, because some people go through these experiences and they just want to throw it all behind and not deal with it for a while as well. And other people are like, you know what? Responsibility. I have to help people mm -hmm. and I have all this wisdom and knowledge and here's, here it is. And so just as like a little quick recap for anyone that's interested in your work as well. So I know you mentioned it's just like a multi-layered system of things that help people. You know, you mentioned diet, parasites, mold. Would there be anything else that you would say to, to mention within this um, podcast as well for people to know, like, what are they going to gain? What are they going to you know, hear from you as well within how you actually help people silence it as just like a little hint or whatever, however yeah. much you want to share. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, this is another thing that I haven't really spoken about yet before, but I'll tell you, I'll make it a first here on the podcast, um, because I'm going to make it public anyway, but when it comes to tinnitus and I'm finding this with a lot of chronic diseases too, as well, like, you know, skin problems, anxiety, infertility, things like that. And that's not what I, that's not my wheelhouse, but I'm just saying when people follow my advice, those things get better too. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I kind of divvy it up, Bianca, into two categories. And those, those categories are, I just call them aspect one and aspect two. Mm -hmm. So aspect one is what happened in the past. So it can be things like the people that I work with, like sexual abuse, physical abuse, mm -hmm. breast implants, mm -hmm. infected root canals, um, mesh in the body, uh, mm -hmm. things like that, you know, things that happened years ago and have probably been like festering under the surface and not really dealt with like 
the emotional trauma of abuse. Maybe you haven't dealt with that because the emotional side of tinnitus is very important too. Yes. Um, and on things like, you know, an affected root canal. And I have women who have breast implants and they, not every time, but sometimes they need to come out. And oftentimes they'll pull the breast implants out and they'll actually be covered in mold. So it's really, it's quite, it's quite full on. Yep. And I know that you have, a, a, I think that's part of your story, if I'm not horribly mistaken. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the last things that I definitely, yeah, definitely helped a lot. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so so that's aspect one of the things that happened in the past, mm -hmm. and aspect two are things that people are doing daily or are happening to people daily that can actually cause problems. So, mm -hmm. uh, or a mold infection and parasites comes under the category of aspect one as well. So aspect two daily things would be like things like too much blue light, not enough sun, nutritional deficiencies, not enough sleep, using Bluetooth headphones, uh, not getting enough nutrition. As I said, so you know people are eating too many too much sugar and not enough really nutritious food like steak and meat and eggs and fish and things like that. Things like too much Wi-Fi exposure can cause problems. Uh, too much chronic stress can cause problems. Uh, taking toxic medications can cause problems. Like, um, you know, again, guys, this is not medical advice. Speak to a doctor like a cardiologist, but people, if you're taking statins, if you're taking the drug to statin, you really need to consider what you're doing. And I'm not telling you to stop taking it. I'm not, but have mm -hmm. a think about what you're doing. Check out Bart Kane, have a think. Um, neck problems, posture problems. So I kind of divvy it up into two categories. So mm -hmm. basically, I mean, we'll, we'll, I'll just touch on it now, but my, and this is, I want to put, make this very clear. This is just a theory of mine, but it really is proving to be true. As you said, when you see the results, like, yeah, I've had people who tried to commit suicide from metonitis before, and they come to me when no one else could help and I fix them. Just as an idea of how barren the world of tinnitus is in terms of an actual solution. Yeah. I've, and this is not a, a humble brag or a brag. I'm just making a point. I really am. I've worked mm -hmm. with people from A-list celebrities, like the type that kind of walk down the street, famous musicians, famous doctors. I work with people who run whole states in countries in three different countries, mm -hmm. police officers, judges, all the way down to like regular people like you and I, people on the street, a taxi driver, as I said, like white, black, I've had trans people, 17 year olds. 13 year olds, their parents come to me, everyone under the sun, because there, there really isn't much of a solution because no one's dealing with the root cause. And the root cause, in my opinion, is mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm -hmm. All of those things I just mentioned, either directly or indirectly inhibit the capacity for the mitochondria, which is like, it's an intracellular, for the people watching, it's an intracellular organelle, which means you've got the cells and you have these different uh, organelles inside of your cells, like the endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, the mitochondria, you have many mitochondria. And the mitochondria is what creates um, adenosine triphosphate, which is obviously the battery, you know, adenosine triphosphate. So one molecule of adenosine and three of phosphate, which is what comes out and it fuels the whole body. And uh, that process I mentioned earlier in this interview, which is where sound waves, which is like energy gets transformed um, into electricity through. So you have the cells in the ears here in the cochlea, and then you have, it kind of looks like this and you have like a stereocilia coming out here and the water in the endolymph, the vibration hits that. And as I said, there's the mechanoelectrical transduction process, turns it into um, a electrical signal impulse that goes to the vestibular cochlear nerve, goes into the auditory regions of the brain, and you can hear. That process mm -hmm. of transforming movement into electricity requires a serious amount of energy, a serious amount of energy. And the thing about hearing is you can never turn it off. Like of all the other senses, if you want to turn off your vision, you know, just do this. Mm -hmm. If you want to turn off your taste, you just, you keep your mouth shut. You want to turn off like, you know, touch, you just, you just do this, right? To some extent, but with hearing, it can never be turned off. Even when you put your fingers in your ears or wear hearing protection, these two bones behind your ears here, the mastoid bones, they work as conduits and send vibration down there and it's still going to be processed and still use energy. Yeah. So all these things like EMF, which affect the gating in the ears, um, things like lack of sleep, uh, lack of nutrition, lack of sunlight, too much, People, and also there's so many things about um, blue lights, like the, the stroboscopic effect of blue lights. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy. People will, you know, and different people have different things, but I always tell people, you know, so you get up in the morning and you have a coffee, which dehyd dehydrates the brain by like 30%. And then they sit under their blue lights, which causes more dehydration, more cellular problem. They're stroboscopic, which means that faster than you can see, it's like a nightclub, like a strobe light. And then you're sitting at your computer with the EMF with no protection for your eyes, dehydrating mm -hmm. your brain. And then they go to the ENT and said, might say my tinnitus came out of nowhere. I've got no idea what to do. 
And then the ENTs don't learn anything about this stuff in school because why would they? It doesn't have anything to do with pharmaceutical drugs and the people who fund the universities, a majority of them are far. Like people who used to work like uh, in the C-suite, which means like CEO, COO, C CTO in these big pharmaceutical companies now sit on the medical, uh, the, the boards of medical universities. How is that not a conflict of interest? Yeah, I wonder what the factor is to do with that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, so um, it's my, in my humble opinion, I really do think I'm correct just because, of, you know, what matters, results matter. Like people can go like, oh, look at this paper and look at this paper and you haven't looked at this. And it's like, just show me the results. I just want to hear from the people who you've fixed. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of where I, I differ in that, um, you know, my, uh, if I can talk about my YouTube channel now, Mm -hmm. It's um, Liam, as the, the title of this video, Liam Stops Tinnitus. Mm -hmm. um, I have my first channel, Tinnitus Treatment, but you know, it's, that's old stuff. Liam Stops Tinnitus. And my Instagram name is Liam underscore stops underscore tinnitus as well. And uh, you can go and get, like, you don't even have to give me money. You don't. You can just go and look at, like, you know, I've got so much free stuff there, so many testimonials. If you go on, on my YouTube channel and go to my playlists, go to Silence is Possible, and it's just. Ch -ch 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 video after video after video after video after video of men women children black white dutch american australian different people and the crazy thing is they all got tinnitus a different way one of them got it from mold one of them got it from a knock to the head one of them got it from me um uh, loud noises another one was an ex nfl player who got a, you know a knock to the head i already said like all these different things and they all follow the same steps to silence because it's yeah. the same thing it's mitochondrial dysfunction it's not i understand okay We've been speaking for a while, so maybe we'll save it for another video. But yeah, you can mm -hmm. follow me on uh, Liam Stops Tinnitus and get the information there. And if you're watching this and you just know, I love you very much, guys. And tinnitus is not for life. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not for life. Beautiful. Thank you so much for all the incredible work you do. It's really amazing. And obviously just offering free content to people. It's just you know, so special because not everyone is in a financial situation where they can afford a course. And, you know, there's always a way people, I, I don't know if you've seen recently on my Instagram, for some reason, people assume I came from a really rich, wealthy family. I had absolutely no I support. Saw that. <laughs> I, I found saw it that. hilarious. It's something new that I've noticed because now I'm traveling and yeah. now I'm working and all of those beautiful things have come. But I struggled. I was homeless as well and had all of these different things that I experienced too. And it was podcasts and free platforms and de yeah. doing it myself, learning my ways, not going to see an ozone spe a specialist, but buying an ozone machine myself and just learning. That's how I had mm -hmm. to do it. And so when yeah. people like yourself, platforms like that really helped me. So thank you for offering that for people. And just to finalize everything, I'd love to ask people words of wisdom, some type of sentence, inspiration, something to leave people with. I know sometimes that can be like a little bit of a strong okay, question, good. but just something to leave people with to feel inspired. Cause I think that's the most important because like you said, all of this can be stopped. We can heal, you know, all these incredible things that you've noted and a living proof you've embodied it yeah. so yeah yeah words of words of wisdom you know i wish i uh um, i should i wish i should have i'm sure there was that. a lot throughout anyway i mean oh yeah there was a yeah, lot. yeah yeah no but w words of wisdom i mean i gotta be honest like i you know I, I live a great life like i i travel all over the world i'm living in a nice uh i live in a suite in bangkok which is nice mm. um but, uh, you know, just like you, nothing, I didn't get anything given to me at mm -hmm. all. Nothing at all. I got no, no money, nothing. Um, but well, I, I'm kind of interested in, um, business per se. So maybe it, it kind of releases in like, like, like relays, if I can remember how English is spoken <laughs> and it links into life. Yeah. And that is the, you know, as much as you can live your life, try not to have to answer to anybody whether it's a boss, your parents, um, the person you're in a relationship with. So I would just tell people, um, start your own business and make it location independent and, uh, sell information. And that's probably why people think that, that you're rich because you, you know, I know you do a similar thing to me, right? You, it's like purely online and everything. So when people see that 
you know, you're in uh, Thailand, in the south of Thailand, on the beach with the, co- with the coconut or whatever, they go, oh, she must be a millionaire. But you don't have to be rich at all, and your quality of life will improve so much. Like I was, I was at the bank today. I've got to tell you real quick. I was at the bank today sorting something out, and uh, you know, I was in there very early because I was up early this morning. And just like the people in there were so depressed, and I was like, "You're going to spend like nine hours in in the indoors under these lights, and just like it's just." <laughs> so I would just tell people, I don't know if it's word or words of wisdom. It's not very like no one is going to get what I just said tattooed on themselves. But I would just tell people, you know, if you if you want to solve like ninety percent, well not ninety, that's not true, but like fifty percent of the problems in your life, start your own little business and make it a hundred percent online. That's mm-hmm. that's what I would say. That's just, and I really think that that would help a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Be you. Be. I think we all came here to actually learn to really be authentically ourselves. And I really believe, especially if you're listening to this and you've gotten this far, you're definitely experiencing some type of chronic condition uh, or you're. Yeah one of those willing doctors that are wanting to actually help people or willing coaches or whatever you are. And I would just say, yeah, follow that, follow your intuition. And like we've mentioned, we had haters. We had all of those kind of things come our way. It doesn't matter. You're not for everyone, but yeah, beautiful. Love that so much. Thank you for all of the wise words. And I also remember, I can put this in the show notes if you don't have it yet, but I think you said that you were going to offer some type of code. Do you want to share that? Yes. So yes. So on top of all the free advice that I do have, you can go to my YouTube channel for that. But just for this uh, call, what I'm going to do for uh, the next 48 hours um, is if you click the link below and you go to my website, I do sell a course, obviously. So I sell a smaller course and a larger course. You can get both of them. Uh, usually the price for both of them is uh, $297. But if you use the code Bianca, uh, you can get $97 off. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and you can get it for just a third of the price, uh, as many people as want it, but just for the next 48 hours. Just, just to say thank you for having me on uh, this call. I really appreciate it, and I had a great time. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Bless. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule that's, that's, you know, immersed in helping others. And yeah, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And all of that information, if you're one of the lucky ones that grabs that first and foremost, will be in the show notes as well. So, and all of the information will also be in the show notes. So beautiful. Bless. Speak to you soon. Thank you for joining this episode. I just want to let you know the willingness to show up for yourself is not something that everyone's willing to do but you are. So you've got this, we've got this, and I'm really proud of you. I also just want to remind you that all the information shared on this episode will be found in the show notes. You can find that in the link of my Instagram, Bianca's Holistic Way. If you're interested in any of my services or the guest services, all that information will also be found there. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with someone who may benefit or leave me a five-star review. It helps others find the podcast too. And most importantly, I want you to remember that you are powerful and that you have everything within Bless and I'll speak to you soon.